MC Lobshear, the host of the Cash Ninja podcast and also the president and chief wealth and investment strategist of Producers Wealth, where we help our clients integrate cash flow banking, also known as infinite banking, with their business and investments. If you're interested in learning more about how we create strategies that integrate cash flow banking and investments to turbocharge them, you can access a video series at yourownbankingsystem.com. That's yourownbankingsystem.com. Welcome to the Cash Flow Ninja, the podcast sharing how to create income streams and manage, multiply, and protect your wealth in the new economy. Here is your host inside the dojo, MC Laubscher. Hello, Cashflow Ninjas. MC Lobster here, and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Ninja. I have a great show for you today, and in today's show, I'm joined by Pat Hyben that will share and brainstorm recession-proof businesses and investments. After being labeled learning disabled with speech deficiencies in the second grade, Pat struggled through public school and graduated college in 1987 with a 2.6 GPA. After college, Pat jumped into the sales industry with the least barrier to entry, real estate. In his first year, Pat struggled and almost quit making a little over $13,000 in commissions. For the last 30 years, Pat has been heavily involved in the real estate industry as both a top agent, broker, and investor in residential and commercial properties. Throughout his career, he has sold over $1 billion with a B dollars in real estate, including over 500 homes in a single year and 14 homes in a single day. He has been recognized by both Remax and Keller Williams as their number one agent in the world. In 2010, he sold his team business to his longtime partner, Mike Sloan, and went on a book tour to promote his books, Six Steps to Seven Figures a real estate professional's guide to building wealth and creating your destiny. With the help of an introduction written personally by Gary Keller, the book went on to sell over 30,000 copies and hit the number six on the New York Times bestseller list and number one on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Pat is an active investor with over 40 lines of passive income. Talk about a cash flow ninja, guys. In 2014, Pat launched his podcast, Real Estate Rockstars, which has had close to 3 million unique downloads by real estate agents from over 108 countries. He currently owns and operates Rebus University and Big Profit Agents, which are training platforms for active real estate salespeople. Pat has two daughters in their 20s and resides in Folly Beach, Southern Carolina with his wife of 25 years. If you're interested in joining our investors group, you can go to cashflowninja.com forward slash investors group and fill out an application form or email me at info at cashflowninja.com to start the discussion to see if you're a good fit for our group. Are you having a hard time finding great investment properties? Unfortunately, the best deals are rarely found locally. Successful investing begins with the right properties in the right markets. Norada Real Estate provides everything you need to invest in the best deals across the United States. Our simple proven system will help you create real wealth and passive monthly cash flow. Learn how to find the best deals by downloading your free copy of The Ultimate Guide to Passive Real Estate Investing at noradarealestate.com. That's N-O-R-A-D-A realestate.com. Pat, welcome back to the show. Hey, brother. How you doing, MC? Doing fantastic. Always great to speak with you and connecting. Always uh, enjoy our discussions. So uh, the Cashflow Ninja listeners get to listen in today. So having Pat on the show, Pat has been a guest on the show before speaking about horizontal lines of income uh, and horizontal streams of income. Um, Pat, I think before we, we jump into and talk a little bit about that, you went uh, from uh, being a commission salesperson, a real estate agent, kicking ass, a billion dollar uh, real estate sales agent, and you became an investor. What was there a time during that period when you were doing well, you're making good income, but you figured 
you know, I just saw this happening. I got to focus more on cash flow. I got to focus more on passive income streams. So, uh, talk us a little bit through that. Sure. Um, you know, I, you know, I, you know, there was nothing that hurt me more as a real estate agent, but to see an agent who's 70 some years old, you know, going out, working with buyers on a Sunday morning at 10 in the morning, um, just, you know, opening up lock boxes, visiting for sale by owners. I just thought, you know, the, how come in an industry where it appears that agents make a ton of money, why are agents not able to retire? You know, why are they still selling at such an old age? And I, I just didn't understand it and, it. and it frustrated me more than anything. So I realized that the, the, the way out to, to my business, a sales related commission oriented business and a way out to any commission related business was investing right? Creating lines of income that paid me horizontally rather than, you know, trading time for money and increasing my income vertically like most of the world. So I just started adding on lines of income one at a time. And that's pretty much what I've done. My, you know, last 20 years of existence is just continue to add lines of income onto my uh, portfolio or my list of lines. And it, it basically, it pays my bills so that, I'm financially free, right? Which is the goal. What was that first uh, horizontal income stream that you created that you stepped back and you said, oh, well, this is, I just, <laughs> you know, I think I've, I've, this is it. This is the way that I'm not going to end up uh, like, uh, what, what's the guy's name in the death of the salesman? Is it Willie Loman or something like yeah, that? Yeah, Willie Loman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm not going to end up, yeah, I'm not going to end up like Willie. Yeah, well, um, I, I guess let's just say that I, I saw other people that I knew, you know, um, close to me that kind of were like that or ended up like that or were ending up like that or were going to end up like that. And uh, because of that, I said, I don't want to do that. And, uh, and my first one actually that I did is my first piece of real estate that I bought, I rented out the basement and then I rented out the bedrooms uh, to a roommate. So basically I took one bedroom out of three and uh, after my tax break, you know, the, the, the rent paid the mortgage. It was, I, I, uh, they call it house hacking now. And this was 30 mm -hmm. years ago. But uh, that's how I did it. And then I had a and then my my wife, my who was my girlfriend at the time. Um, and I got an FHA loan on that house. So a first time buyer loan and because uh, loans were a lot harder to come by. And so I got her to qualify for another FHA loan. And she got an FHA loan and we bought uh, the house down the street and rented that house out. And that's kind of where I got the bug. And you're now invested uh, in many different areas, real estate, businesses, uh, startups, and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. What are some of the, what are some of the uh, uh, industries and businesses currently that excite you uh, as far as adding income streams and uh, that you're looking at and uh, that, that you're studying? You know, <laughs> I never here here's here's the reality of it. You know, you know, there's certainly some people out there like the PayPal mafia, these guys like Elon Musk and and um, you, you know, whoever that uh that seem to always know, you know, um what the right industry is or what the right business is. The truth of the matter is I don't know. I I'm invested in about 16 companies now and the ones that I thought were, I wasn't excited about are the ones that are succeeding the most. The ones I was most excited about are succeeding the least, it seems. So I don't want to paint myself as someone who, who can look under the hood of a business and be like, man, this thing is a jackpot because I certainly have had businesses go under um, that, uh, that I thought were great. And, and I've had some recent uh, businesses, two of them actually, thank, thank goodness, um, that have uh, that have been bought 
and um, I just had a, a business, a true story I invested. Here's a, here, if you, if you got a second, I'll tell you the story. I mean, this is, yeah. and, and I'm going to tell you an analogy here. I'm standing on a soapbox, if you don't mind. I'm just, just No, no, get, get on that soapbox. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever heard the, the story of the Chinese farmer, MC? Uh, I'm not, not, sure, not sure. Go ahead and share. Well, there's a story. There's a fable called the Chinese farmer. And basically the way it works is there was a Chinese farmer. And uh, one day he was out working on his crops and he had two horses and both horses ran away. And um, all the neighbors came to him and they said, that sucks. All your horse, your horses ran away. Who is going to pull your plow? You can't grow crops you know your life is ruined and he says we'll see and then the next day the two horses come back and they bring with them seven more wild horses and they're like and all his neighbors come over and they're like man this is awesome now you have nine horses you're going to be rich for life and he says we'll see and then the next day, his son gets on one of these wild horses. He's trying to tame the wild horse, and the horse throws him off, and he breaks both legs. And all the neighbors come over, and they're like, oh, man, that sucks. Your son has two broken legs. He's not going to be able to help you in the fields, and your business is going to go down now. You know, you're not going to be able to farm. And he says, we'll see. And then the next day, the army comes, and they're fighting like Genghis Khan or something, and they're like, hey, we're recruiting every young man under 22 years old to come fight for us. You have an 18-year-old. We are taking him to the army to fight. And they looked at him, and he had two broken legs. And so, um, and they didn't take him, obviously. And so, you know, you get the point. Well, that's kind of how life is. I really think in investing. And a real-life story that happened to me was, in about 2013, I got involved uh, with a ex NFL player, Ricky Williams. And uh, I was like, uh, Ricky, you know, we can, we can um, uh, use you to, mm, let's say, um, promote uh, marijuana because weed is going to become legal, you know, in the future. It's, uh, there's going to be a, a, a firestorm. Let's, uh, let's get together and, um, use you as a product like it's like so we made like a an an agency right okay. where he would where he would endorse things so we went to colorado we went to nevada we went to california we met with all these people um and not to get into any of the details but it all fell through right nothing happened right i wasted a lot of time so it's like, well, that sucks right and it's and it's attitude of we'll see well it just so happened that I met um, a guy that was that we were talking about with a company called Ebu that was a new company that wanted to consider Ricky endorsing them, but then decided they didn't have enough money and they just weren't into it. And they said, no. Well, the guy kept in touch with me and he's like, we're raising money. And I said, hey, I kind of liked your guys concept when I was in Colorado, Colorado meeting you with Ricky. Um, I'll give you a hundred grand. He said, cool. I gave him a hundred grand. Um, and I said, we'll see, right? Two right. years two years later, um, he sends me an email and he says, dude, he says, we got about enough money to make it to Thanksgiving. This was like beginning of October. I was like, fuck, you're kidding me, man. Um, there goes my hundred grand. Easy come, easy go, right? Um, and uh, I said, we'll see. And uh, about a week before, Right. They were going to run out of money. Someone gave them a million bucks. Right. Hmm, OK, we'll see. Right. Then they they were able to, you know, patent a a, a, a get the IP on something that uh, greatly increases the rate at which the the and I don't want to get into too much detail, but the 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 male side of the plant grows. They create CBD oil. Right. Um I said, well, see, he's like, do you want to invest any more money? I'm like, no way. I don't know anything about CBDs. I don't, I don't know who would use it. We'll see, right? But, of course, CBD is going crazy. It's everywhere. Um, who would have thought? I didn't guess that. Um, anyways, they got, they got uh, bought by a company out of Canada called Canopy Growth. So my um, 100000 is now worth over a million dollars in a public company called Canopy Growth, right? 
So it, it, my point is the same thing as a Chinese farmer. You have no freaking <laughs> idea what is going to happen when you do stuff in life. I went, started out with this great idea that I thought was I was going to make tons of money with Ricky Williams, and the thing fell flat on its face. It was a disaster, right? Right. But now that I'm looking back on it, a five-year span, I'm like, hey, all you got to do is keep saying we'll see. And I tell my wife this all the time. You don't know. Like, I. I, people ask me all the time, Pat, what's the best investment you've ever done? And I'm just like, we'll see. I won't know. I won't know whether my podcast, my educational business, any of this stuff is, is going to pay off until I'm like 95 and I'm sitting on a front porch of a mobile home somewhere. And then my great, great grandson says, what's the best business you've ever done? I'll say this one, <laughs> this one that I did <laughs> right. this and it led to this and it led to this and it led to this. Otherwise, you nobody knows. You know, right, it's not that good. Right, and it it takes patience. I mean, uh, uh, there's so many lessons in what you just shared. I mean, the one thing that that sticks out, and also with the story, is 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 patience. You know, and sometimes investments that require patience, they are they require some time to to develop and mature and play out. Uh, that's not good uh, cocktail party material. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, right. not, it's not the get rich quick scheme, quick home run. It's all, it's, you know, it's more the singles, the solid, like in the movie Moneyball. It's more like the solid. I love that. Yeah. yeah get on, get on first base. And, and over time, all these start to stack up and stack up. And uh, what I've seen you, you do is there's many different sorts of them, right? The digital, the digital business, you know, Rebus University platform that you're creating, the real estate investments. And then there's a couple of other things here in, in different startups. Absolutely. You know, Warren Buffett says the best businesses are boring businesses. And I think people don't think of that. You know, it's like, well, you know, insurance is boring. You're an insurance, right? It's, yeah. it's boring, right? I got a buddy that's, uh, that has, it's all, his business is freight, you know? And then, <laughs> and he cracked a joke, you know, we were on a, in a mastermind and, and, and someone asked, what is, what is the most thing that inspires you and, and turns you on the most? And he gets on the microphone and says, freight. <laughs> <laughs> getting things from point a to point b that's yeah that's, that's what i'm in a, it, it was a joke but it's yeah. the best business sometimes are the are the are the boring ones although you know weed and stuff is exciting um but uh but at the same time you just don't know and um and 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 the home runs i think of uh, man every couple of months as soon as i get um you know a repair bill for one of my single family rentals or something. I'm like, man, we need to sell that dog. Right. As soon as I get a tenant that won't let an inspector in or, uh, you know, doesn't pay the rent. I'm like, I don't need to sell that dog. But you know, at the end of the day, the, those boring ones are, are the singles are the money ball ones that you probably should just hold on to because, you know, if we do head into a recession or things do start to slow down, I'm wondering if those things are probably a little more recession proof. If my single family home that's worth 140 grand, you know, that rents for 1250 a month, um, may be more recession proof than majority of uh, businesses that I own. You know what I mean? If that sucker's always going to spin off, there's always going to be a tenant for that right. blue collar house. Right. Um, you know, I, I don't know. What? Let me ask you, MC. What? What do you think is recession proof? I just uh, jotted down some notes here when you spoke about uh, Warren Buffett and you used that Warren Buffett quote because he's heavily invested in Coca-Cola and Hershey, right? So there's two businesses that <laughs> it's not the next Facebook IPO or anything crazy. But think about, I mean, Coca-Cola and Hershey from an inflationary standpoint, I mean, both of those, you look at a can of Coke or a bottle way back when, when they sold it to a can of Coke right now, more or less the same. You look at a Hershey bar, it's, it's, it's kind of from an inflationary standpoint, it's kind of kept up from a recession standpoint. While people might cut back on candy you know, or, or Coca-Cola, but yeah, recession, proof. and this is a great, great, but I, uh, but I don't know that this is great. Yeah. Right? I don't know. I, I, I can't really say that like, okay, my, my neighbor 
uh, just got a fifty thousand dollar bonus as at in his dental practice, so he's going to go out and buy uh, you know a, a ton of Hershey bars, right? I don't. <laughs> no, I, 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 right. No, I think you're right. I don't think that. I don't think stuff like that is um, necessarily, um, you know, going to fluctuate a, a hell of a lot with with the recession. That's interesting, right? That's, so the I, the mm, the lower yeah. priced items that are staples in people's lives, they'll continue even if they're you know short on money. They'll they'll buy Coca Cola. It's it's very hard for people to switch to. RC light or, you know, um, you know, Walmart Cola or generic brands. Right. I'm thinking money. Absolutely. And I'm thinking about children, weddings, funerals. Um, I'm thinking about um, if you look at housing, for instance, we've spoken quite a bit about mobile home parks as a vehicle for, uh, for recession, because I mean, once you're out of, uh, once you hit the mobile home park, there's no, there's nowhere really else to go, right? Um, especially in a recession. So folks make make those payments. Mm, that's uh, a good point. There's nowhere. I mean, a tent, right? No. Homeless, right. Once you leave the mobile home park, right? I mean, that's the. I like that. A buddy of mine, um, you know, is buying up as many mobile home parks as he can between Georgia and Charlotte, and um, between Atlanta and Charlotte and uh, out, you know, in the South, like literally like one a week. And um, he loves that stuff. So, you know, that's, uh, I, I don't own any mobile home parks. Uh, I did invest in one about 10 years ago and lost all my money in it um, <laughs> uh, because the guy tried to grow too fast and he was kind of like doing mobile home parks that he was flipping. It was only 33,000, but but I should. Uh, I, I've thought about um, investing. Uh, as Greenleaf is the name of the company that's buying them all. But uh, right now, that I was just talking about, I, I've thought about giving them some money. You're listening to Pat Hyben on the Cashflow Ninja podcast. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Life settlement investments have allowed financial and banking institutions to not only buy their equity contractually, but also diversify their capital from any economic market and geopolitical risk. It's been part of the billion dollar blueprint followed by institutional investors. And if you're an accredited investor, you can also now participate in this vehicle with enormous growth potential. You can watch an informational webinar presented by one of the premier organizations providing life settlement investments for number of solutions at cashflowninja.com forward slash life settlements. You're listening to Pat Hyben on the Cashflow Ninja podcast, and I'm back to our interview. Yeah, and the other thing that w- was interesting too is self-storage. When you look at what happened during 2008 and 2009, because my f- initial reaction would be, well, a storage boom is kind of correlated to overconsumption. You know, when you have too much stuff, you know, like George Carlin puts it, to get put in your house, where do you put this extra stuff? But because of... Obviously, the economic conditions changing and folks leaving and having to move out of houses and downgrading and, you know, moving into smaller places, they, they had to put their, their stuff somewhere. Uh, so when you look at some of the numbers, I, I mean, I was quite surprised too, looking at some of this data, but self storage, mobile home parks, and those two do come up quite often in conversations now that we that we self storage is going up everywhere, dude. And and you yeah. know, here's here's what I wonder though, because I, I'm I'm the father of two millennials. I got a twenty two year old and a twenty four year old. So you know what I see in their friends and and, and and what I think I see, and again I could be wrong because I'm wrong a lot. Um minimalism. Big trend minimalism so if you're a minimalist or or you you know i mean i got rid of 75 percent of my belongings in the last five years um dude i had a whole library full of books i just donated them i said hey books are digital now i get them on my kindle or if i want to get a hard book then i'll just give it as a gift to somebody i had i had uh 25 years of journals of diaries that i had written i I gave them to uh, a lady and she scanned them all in uh, you know, on a, on a backup drive for me and shredded them. Um, uh, clothes. I got rid of basically all my suits, all my ties. Uh, I, 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 you know, 
I try, I I get more and more minimalist uh, as I age. Now that's that happens to be me. I certainly am friends with hoarders, um, <laughs> um, but I think that my point is I think that the gener the 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 millennials right or, or who are a huge army of people in our population, a huge army of people. Um, need less and less. They're more about experiences. They're more about um, time spent uh, with other people, going to things like festivals and and uh, hanging out with groups of 12 friends at a time. Um, and uh, they're less about collecting shit. Absolutely. And they, they use things, right? So they they don't necessarily own things, but they use things. You know, it's like the Uber, Airbnb kind of generation. They share. Where, it's a yeah, sharing economy. Yeah, the sharing economy. So that would make me wonder if if storage space is a bad bet, especially with it going. I know in South Carolina where I'm at, um, literally they're like gas stations, right? They're mm. like they're popping up everywhere. They're like Starbucks, you know? Right. Right, right. The other, the other thing that I'm looking, and you mentioned demographics. When you look at demographics, and this is going to be interesting, um, saying in quotation marks, interesting, because we have a massive demographic that's in the process of, quote, unquote, retiring, living their final chapter, the baby boomers, right? And they, of course, spend a lot of money. They bought a lot of stuff and so forth. And if we, if the markets, which it looks like, you know, who knows, markets go up, down, and sideways. But if, when we're heading into a recession and a big portion of their their savings are going down and so forth, there's going to be opportunities uh, for, I would say, for resist, uh, recession resistant businesses within that that sphere. Assisted uh, living facilities is one. Yeah, I don't think that's going away by any means. I I, I don't think there's enough. Yeah, I think that. I think you're going to see more and more of a need for that because people are living longer too. You know what I mean? I mean, it used to be, you know, they got, you know, you know, as you got older, you became more susceptible to stuff, but now it's like, yeah, you become more susceptible, but we got this, these drugs and we got this therapy that that's going to kick its butt. And then, and then you live longer. Right. And then next thing you, you know, so everybody's living longer. Um, and they need assistance and, and, you know, whether their mind deteriorates or their body deteriorates or both, some part of them deteriorates, which you need help with, um, i.e. assisted living. So it's, I, I, I think you're in good shape there. Yeah. It's like a real estate slash healthcare play because healthcare yeah. is growing with an aging population. That and, would be recession proof, I think. Except except if it was on the high end, you know what I mean? Like and they, people mm -hmm. just couldn't afford it and they had to put their parents in a lower end or cheaper place, you know. Yeah, cuz it's I mean it's not it's not cheap those places. I I definitely tell you that and there's not a lot of folks I would say that uh, potentially had uh, long-term healthcare policies. Uh, that can assist them with that. So that, that's definitely something. I mentioned babies, weddings, and funerals, just the life cycle, uh, businesses. Businesses itself, uh, Pat, what would you say of diversifying the idea of diversification um, within a business where, let's just say if you were a B2C business, right, of potentially adding a line that you could add like a B2B as well. So now you're a little bit more diverse because obviously consumers, you know, the, the, your potential clients and your customers, your, their pockets will get hit in a recession. So that'll impact your business. What do you say about maybe adding a different line and also going after companies at that stage? Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, like certainly the business that I'm in with, say, training real estate agents. Um, I have a mastermind company called GoBundance, um, you know, uh, where where people mastermind and they grow on, 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 on how to get better and how to get richer and all that good stuff. I I can't say either of those is recession proof. You know what I mean? Because it's uh, they're all growth oriented. And I think when when you, when you go into a recession, people start shrinking. They they're they're more scarcity thinking, you know, than they are growth oriented. It's very hard to bet against the tide. You know what I mean? If everything's falling the crap, 
it's hard for people to really charge out there and go, no, keep going, you know, learn more, grow more. Uh, it's more like, hey, you better tighten up and and uh, buckle down. Time for defense. I don't know. It's interesting. It's very int- It's a great conversation. Yeah, because from an investment standpoint, if you think, uh, you know, some of the stuff that we do, we obviously warehouse savings in, in insurance contracts and so we leverage it to in cash flow investments, real estate being one, let's just say mobile home parks. So in a, in a, from an investment standpoint, if you look at a recession coming in and there's another 2008, 2009, you at least know that your savings is warehoused properly and during the last recession downtown, that was fine. And then the the real estate, yeah, I, I'd, I, I'd, I still have some of the single family that I had during then. It got The equity got hit pretty bad, but it still produced month, monthly cash flow. I actually still have one of the properties too that still produces monthly cash flow. So I didn't have any intention of selling it. So when you look at from an investment stand, uh, pre- preparing for it, it's a little bit different than from a business because now you're in, we're, we're in this environment where everything's going to be impacted uh, with, uh, yeah, w- what's going on in the, in the economy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So what are some, what is some of the stuff that's working right now in your business and in your life and, and why are they working for you? Well, you know, I think what's working good is online stuff. I mean, we're, we, we sell our, our university courses at Rebus University online. And, 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 you know, what we've discovered in the last three years of doing it is we, were, we, we used to sell our courses a la carte, like one at a time, you know, 1200 bucks for this course, 1000 bucks for this course, $500 for this course. And, and what we've come to the conclusion, and this is once we've had, we had 18 courses available is that, you know, more people are are willing to pay $127 a month for access to all of them than they are to just buy them one at a time. It's kind of like audible, right? When you sign up for books on uh, recorded books on audible, you just pay a monthly fee and you get access to every single book uh, and you can listen to a certain amount a month. The same thing with iTunes, right? I mean, for you, yep. for since they came out with iTunes, where you have the family plan of ten dollars a month, and you can pick every single song in the universe. Um, that's a much better way to go than the old-fashioned jukebox way, where you had to pay per song. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so uh, that's the way of the world, and and uh, we we have finally learned that I think in the last couple of months and and so we're getting more and more students um by our continuity uh, plan of just you know paying a monthly fee and going in there and letting the chips fall where they may and, and doing that so uh, i think that that's that's where it's at and online learning i went in there for a reason because i knew more and more people were going to want to be working virtually and 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 doing online i went and looked at um uh, a friend of mine uh, is uh, hasn't settled yet, but he bought a church, and uh, the church was was designed out by an advertising firm and then sold, and um, uh, he's creating uh, like a virtual workspace with it. Uh, it's twelve thousand square foot church, and it'll be virtual workspace. And uh, I do believe in that concept. I do think that you can have more and more people like, dude, I just need a desk. I just need to get out of the house. Uh, I just want a, a place to go. Um, by choice, meaning I don't need to go there every day, you know, um, and it's month to month. I don't need to sign a five-year lease or a 10-year lease. Um, and you're going to see more and more companies doing this. And it's, and, then, and this is happening fast, man. This is this stuff is going buck wild, you know, um, just uh, where companies are changing their whole dynamics and just saying, okay, we're virtual now. Everybody work from home and, you know, we'll watch metrics or there's metrics created. So you get the job done. I know at Rebus University, I have eight employees. I've more than half of them. I've never physically met, you know, they're all in different countries and different States. So I, I, I think that's big business too. You've mentioned two industries there that I would consider falling basically very close to recession proof. The online learning, because one of the things that, that I saw, I mean, and this is a huge trend. This is, this is how people will learn and are learning already. 
And I think more and more folks um, are figuring out that, am I going to put in four years in college and walk out there with, if I'm not going to become a doctor, a lawyer, engineer, you know, a specific skill set, if it's just a general education, is my time better spent just picking, learning skills online? That's, that's one. And then the other one is a lot of folks went back to quote unquote school or university or got their MBAs or, and, and so forth to skill up during the last crisis, right? So I'm thinking, and I mean, this is just me speculating, that more folks in a recession will try to learn another skill and figuring out what do I need? And if there's agents maybe that, you know, the platform that you're providing for in your target audience, they want to increase their skill set because it's now competition is now. Well, that's, harder, it, that's right? interesting. Will they learn? I guess if they get laid off or they, or, you know, if it's like that, but yeah, I mean, well, well I also think that the sign of the times is there's, Everything is changing so fast that you have to learn more and more. We're becoming, you, you used to be able to do a job and not have to learn stuff. You know, you have minimal continuing education, minimal updates and things. And now technology, everything's being updated every month. You know, it's just right. crazy. So, yeah, I think so. I think, and, and, the, and the get going back to the millennial things, you, you know, they figure it out. That's the coolest thing about hiring a millennial, man, um, is that, um, you know, you know, here, here's an example. I just, but then again, I'll give you another true story and, and, um, Hey, whatever. I'll just say, it. so, um, I, I had, you know, um, we, we've had some recent, uh, changes, at Rebus university. And, um, I just hired this millennial is actually a friend of my daughter's. He's 24 years old. And I was on our Slack yesterday. I'm used to seeing about, uh, you know, I was out all day looking at this church, this WeWork thing that uh, that uh, I'm con considering investing in, right? And then I and then uh, I did this neat thing. But anyways, uh, so anyway, so I went and did that. And I, I was I didn't have my computer, and I only get emails on my computer. So I um I was I was away from Slack and away from the computer. I got home, it was like six o'clock, opened up Slack. I had two messages. I'm like, that's weird. Let me refresh it. Two messages. And I really and, and I'm used to like 17 to 20. And I'm like, well, here's what I really think it is. I, I think it's the millennials. He's figuring everything out. He's not asking me any questions. You know what I mean? He's like, you know, if he has a question, he just goes on YouTube and looks it up or he asks somebody else or he, he tries to figure it out. You know what I mean? He digs mm -hmm. in. And I think that's the millennial style. I do think that the older generations, their style is if you need directions, ask for them, right? Pull over right. the damn car and, uh, and say, do you know how to get to here? Well, the millennials like, oh my God, don't do that. That's so embarrassing. You know, I'll just, you know, go online and look it up or GPS or whatever. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. It, it does make sense. Um, and uh, especially with the, another thing on the online learning that you mentioned, playing into the trend of renting and just using versus owning is that membership subscription monthly, instead of buying a course outright. And now you have that one course instead of, you know, having access to the full library and just quote unquote renting it on a monthly basis. Yeah, no, and it goes back to, yeah, like you said, the sharing economy. That's what, like, uh, I, you know, I talked to a guy today and I'm like, dude, it's $127 a month. And, 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 and this kid was a, a, an aggressive learner. He'd been in real estate a year and uh, he heard every show. Of I did 750 shows over the last three years. He listened to all of them, right? So he's obviously devouring content, right? Yeah. I'm like, dude, it's, it's like $12,000 worth of courses, but if you want to go in and take all 18 courses in a month, right, and devour them, uh, you could cancel after the first month. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, I'm just sharing them with you. And um, he was like in. So, you know, um, and I, I have a feeling he might do that. And if he does, so be it. Because you know what? I've already created the product. I've already spent the money to build them. So, what do I care if he devours them all? It doesn't cost me anything else, you know? What's the renewal rate on some of those on a monthly basis? And what's kind of the, the average life of a, an acquired customer in your experience? On, I, on you models? know, here's the thing. I don't have the metrics for that. I, you know, at one point it was five months, um, okay. but, but, um, but we used to sell it for two ninety seven a month. Gotcha. So like now 
were selling for one twenty seven. So what's what's that? That's like a eighty percent. You know, we dropped our prices. So I don't at at three hundred bucks a month. It was five months at one twenty seven. It could be a couple of years. You just don't know. I don't know. I'll let you know. You know, next time we do a show. And by the way, for the Cashflow Ninja listeners, uh, Pat has courses that include in how to invest in single family, um, how to invest in multifamily, how to raise capital. There's just a ton of real uh, real estate investor specific courses on there too. So it isn't just for. Uh, real estate salespeople. There is a ton of stuff there for investors where Pat shares his knowledge alongside with the folks that are presenting and teaching with them of how to create all of these uh, these income streams from those spe- uh, specific niches in real estate. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to do an in back because I wanted everybody to learn more about investing. So, uh, you know, whether it's raising private equity money, whether it's, you know, syndicating apartment deals, shopping centers, mobile homes, I wanted all that in there, right? I want Airbnbs, I wanted it all, right? So I, you know, I spent a week, in, I think I got 12 different real estate gurus in there that are just uh, dropping specifics on how to. And uh, so, yeah, that's all in there too. As a matter of fact, that's called uh, that's called our certified real estate mogul, um, C R E M. And I'll I'll throw this out there if you if you guys just are you listening and you just want to get the certified real estate mogul, right? Any of the five courses that are there, they're all broken down to make them cheaper for you. But um, I'll I'll throw out a coupon C R E M eighty C R E M eighty, and that will. Um, that will give you 80% off. So that's, that's a holiday bonus for you there. Fantastic. Well, uh, Pat, um, what are you currently studying? Uh, what are you, anything interesting that you're reading and what are some of the things that you're excited about as we, uh, gosh, I can't believe it's at the end of the, basically the end of the year already. I know. Uh, yeah. Uh, as we end off, uh, 2019. That's awesome. Right. What am I currently studying? Um, man, you know, um, you know, I'm. Uh, you know, one of the things I'm getting, I'm excited about. Sort of, I'm, 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 I'm getting ready to jump into with the holidays. Is uh, I'm, I'm doing a tech fast, right? I'm going phone free. I'm handing over to a friend of mine my laptop and my phone, mm-hmm. getting it back five days later. Oh wow! And and uh, <laughs> so, so I was on Amazon last night. Like, okay, well, what am I going to do? Let me buy some hard books. And read some hard books, right? Just mm-hmm. just get into some reading. I bought the um, David Goggins. He's that. Uh, he's a Navy SEAL guy who uh, is something like you. You can't hurt me. Is his book. Um, he's just a, a tough ass Navy SEAL guy. And I uh, bought another book called um, A Five Hundred Dollar House in Detroit, which is about a guy that it's like two thousand nine buys a five hundred dollar house in, on a street that there's no people living on <laughs> in Detroit is basically a shell and um, it lives by fire um, for like a year in the freezing cold and like basically camping out in the shell and then piece by piece puts together this house and builds a house and then all the vagrants and weird people that that hang out not weird but all the human beings that live in Detroit in these neighborhoods that are abandoned right mm-hmm. and um, uh, you know, and hang out there. And he wrote a book about it. So that's, that would be what I'm, I, I guess I'm studying now, other than things like click funnels and, and ways to make more money online. Certainly there's never enough to learn uh, that way. Absolutely. And it changes weekly, daily, <laughs> by yeah. the hour algorithms, uh, especially on all of these, these different platforms, accountability and mentorship has played a very big role in your life. Uh, do you want to uh, share a little bit more on that? And if there's anyone in particular that you're studying right now to and following? Uh, wow. Yeah, man, you're keeping me on my game. I mean, like, um, you know, I've always said that uh, most people just have like one mentor or they think that mentorship is is like this Rip Van Winkle type old man with a long beard and long hair that sits at the top of a hill under under a tree and gives out advice on everything. And I, I don't believe that's the case. I think that mentor is really mentors. You can have like a hundred different mentors um, and uh, you could have a mentor, 
you know, it's, it's a marriage count, uh, someone who has a great marriage, a great father, a great, um, you know, financial person, a great business person. Um, so I, I got like a hundred mentors. Um, wow. Um, I guess MC is a mentor of mine, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, had to have a great, uh, happy personality online and, um, you know, all the online people are, are I guess, uh, mentors from afar, like how to do it. I'm really trying to figure out, like, you know, how to do it, but um, but not do it. You know, I, I'm always looking for that angle, right? Like how to get how to get rich without being famous, right? Or you, you know how to how to how to make a lot of money without having to to grind. You know, the opposite of what a lot of these people are teaching. Um, so I look for mentors like that. Um, and, uh, you mentioned yeah. click funnels. You meant that's, that's one right there, you know, like, uh, studying, I mean, Russell Brunson obviously teaches yeah. a lot of stuff. That's a, that's a good one. Yeah. Right so there. this morning I shot two hours worth of <clears throat> videos. There are probably 20 different videos in there, right? Literally mm -hmm. there's 20 different videos. <clears throat> we just let the camera roll for two hours, but you know, the guy like, like, like I've been talking my whole life. And so um, my, uh, the, the guy, this millennial that I just hired, he would just yell out um, the subject. And okay. I would just start babbling on said subject. And then he'd be like, okay, cool. That's great. And then, and so then what he's going to do is going to take all these different videos of me talking on the subject and then add a clip of me um, selling uh, Rebus university for 127 bucks a month to the end with a funnel and then, you know, it's going to be so much content, but I was able to do it just because he was able to tell me to do it. And, and so he's going to go back his name's Austin. Our other guy's name is Will. Austin and Will are going to go back and they're going to create some brilliant stuff. That's probably going to take two weeks to create. Uh, and, and it is probably, you know, if it works, could use every, every single holiday season, uh, over and over again. And my job is done pretty much after, after the two hours it takes. And that's why I like the click funnels. That's why I like the online learning, uh, that doesn't require my hand holding. Um, so I'm very attracted to learning more and more about that. They call them evergreen, you know, which yep. just means that you, you can just keep using it. It can just run in the background. <laughs> like, you know, you don't know <laughs> so I can be in Australia or South America or whatever, or, South Africa or whatever and, and hanging out playing golf. And next thing you know, you know, I sold, you know, 30 new, 30 new students came and are taking our courses. And from a student's perspective for me personally, and, and I like what you said about um, uh, virtual mentors too. Like I love the, that I have the ability to basically go online to find someone that's already accomplished what I wanted to accomplish purchase that course and w whatever the price is, I get to download basically 20 to 25 years of experience like this learning and, curve, right? Learning. Oh, curve. Is, is, it just, oh my God, it's it, it totally just disrupted. Com yeah. Compresses everything. And, it, and it's also, you know, uh, from a mentorship standpoint, obviously these courses are created with the students in mind, you know, the things that they need to know and so forth. So it's just, it's phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. So really, really cool stuff. Pat, I appreciate you coming on, uh, my friend. As always, great to chat with you. Uh, any parting words for the Cashflow Ninja listeners? Hey, you know, if you haven't picked up my book, uh, you can get it uh, free, F-R-E-E. -E. All you got to do is pay shipping. Go to sixstepsbook.com. Actually, not that, but free six-step book. Free six, S-I-X, free S-I-X steps book.com free six steps book.com you can pick up my new york times bestseller six steps to seven figures um <clears throat> i've sold over thirty thousand copies and uh this is not just for agents but it's for investors any type of salesperson any type of entrepreneur uh it basically tells you how in six steps i was able to retire from a sales job at 46 years old and just live off my investment income so uh, free six S I X free six steps book.com. And you can find me on social media anywhere, you know, just type in my name. I'm easy to find. There's only one of me that I know of. So, um, I'm happy to, uh, uh become friends with you and, and, and let's get to know each other.
Awesome. Ben, well, thank you so much for coming on the show again and sharing your journey, your knowledge, and providing so much value for my listeners. My pleasure, MC. This is a blast. MC Lampshire, the creator and host of The Cashflow Ninja and president of Producers Wealth. And I'm on a mission to help you achieve economic and financial freedom as quickly as possible. I achieve this by integrating the infinite banking concept with real estate investments to increase your efficiency and returns and recapture cash flow that you're not even aware of that you're losing. I share the number one strategy for investors in my holistic wealth creation course at yourownbankingsystem.com. That's yourownbankingsystem.com. Thank you for joining me again on the Cashflow Ninja. Thank you for all your support. You rock. If you like what you hear and appreciate what we're trying to build here at the Cashflow Ninja, please subscribe, rate, and review our show on iTunes and share our show with family, friends, and your network. If you're not a subscriber to our newsletter, you can sign up for our newsletter at cashflowninja.com or text Cashflow Ninja to 44222. I'm also posting daily videos on Facebook and YouTube and will live stream weekly starting May 2018. To make sure you don't miss any of the live streams, please like and subscribe to my Facebook and YouTube platforms. I'm also dropping content on Instagram daily. Be sure to follow us on Instagram to get in on the action. I want to thank you for spending your most precious resource with me today, your time. That's our show for today. Until next time, live a life of passion and purpose on your terms. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objectives, such situation and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness.